to some news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Thank you so much for joining me on this lovely, lovely, lovely Friday afternoon, the 21st of January, the third Friday of 2022. My goodness, has it been an amazing week for news. Himes, thank you so much for the gift subs. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Lovely. So today, where? Where was the news? What kind of news? What happened this week? <laughs> I'm just typing the news intro right now. Jeez. All right. So, fucking hell. All right. I have a note here. It's in my notes. I'm going to read it to you, okay? This is how I feel. I'm tired of talking about NFTs, but they won't stop fucking being everywhere. All right? That's that's in my fucking notes because I'm tired of it, but it keeps fucking popping up everywhere. Hey, want to join some Twitter space later? <laughs> Let's go in there and talk to all these fucking crypto evangelicals and everything. Uh, okay. Let's start with the NFT thing. Yes, we're going to talk about the Blizzard stuff. Let's start with the NFT thing, all right? Because it's a lot. There are plagues, of course, they keep showing up. It is like a plague. It is like a plague. Uh, and, and let me tell you, like, I, I'll, I'll say this again. I said this yesterday. I said this before. Like, I am very, I'm very ambiguous about whether I support or do not, do not support NFTs because I understand the technology might have a future, but the way that it's being abused right now makes me want them to go the fuck away because we're clearly not ready for it. We are, we as a society <laughs> are not ready for it at all because it's just being fucking abused. It's like, it's like, uh, the ice bucket challenge where like everybody's getting involved. Everybody's trying to get involved. They see, oh, Hey, this is an easy way for us to you know, get some promotion or some PR. Let's just dump some fucking boy water in the head. <sighs> or I don't know why would buy some I want to buy some digital cannabis. How does that sound? Some NFT cannabis. You guys are just some NFT weed. <sighs> Got some NFT weed for you, boy. Call your plug. Let them know. Meet me and meet me in the metaverse. Decentraland. We'll do the deal, man. Real. This is real. All right. Right here in Oakland. <laughs> Peaks. They have their own digital cannabis dispensary where they're going to be selling NFTs probably art related uh, and also to be using that money to fund workshops to teach locals, Oakland locals, uh, how to utilize the uh, the blockchain and how to mint their own stuff and everything. <laughs> this is a society. So yeah, you got, we got digital weed, boy, we got digital weed. We got, we got NFT stamps that are happening from the United States post office for reals. They're actual podcasts. I follow the post office. Twitter, all right? And this is 100% because of the whole DeJoy thing that happened the uh, last couple of years, right? Uh, <laughs> Americans understand. <laughs> and so they tweeted this out this morning and it's like the USPS, they straight up had, they have a podcast, I was listening to it and they're talking about how they're gonna revive Mr. Zip, which let me grab a picture of that. Mr. Zip is an ancient USPS um, uh, cartoon figure that originated, that started in uh, like 1960 something, right? Uh, and it's this, it's this little character. Now they're talking about it on, uh, on, uh, here we go. Perfect. Yeah, here we go. This guy. So you may have seen it before, but they were talking about utilizing some of these old IPs that belong to the post office and bringing that to current and, you know, maybe potentially making NFTs from it. After they had already done the Dio de los Muertos uh, uh, NFTs that they did in October for collectible digital stamps. They already did this in October, but now they're going back and they want to do some more. And I think they're like, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. Because they did sell out of their initial batch of NFTs, the stamps, but they're like $6 each. You can't use them to stamp anything. It's for collectors. <laughs> Uh, are you watching, uh, after watching Josh Strife Hayes, a uh, video on NFTs are giant scam pyramids. Who's Josh Strife Hayes? Hold on a second. Josh Strife Hayes. Who's that guy? Oh, no, yeah, I, don't, I didn't watch that one. I watched another video. It was like two hours long this morning. Uh, and I watched the entire motherfucking thing. <laughs> um, I can't remember who it was from though. Uh, folding, folding, something folding, folding, 
Something folding. Um, anyways, it's uh, it's really good. It's two hours long. It's really, really good. And I, I couldn't spot anything in the video I watched this morning that actually uh, got anything wrong. I don't know what, um, I know that over time, like when people jump on it, they jump on the uh, let's, let's hate on NFTs without even really understanding what they are train. <laughs> Go Carnage. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I know that these are things that uh, they're not folding at home. Um, uh, but I know that people want to jump on it to make a video about it or something like that, and they usually end up getting shit wrong and everything. Which is why, again, I like to be ambiguous about things until I learn about them before I really speak to them. I try to understand and learn them first before I open my fucking mouth. And I'm still learning. Anyways, as a former victim of MLM, yeah, NFT smell just like it. Yep, yep, yep. Um. But there's more. Uh, Netflix is asking the question. They're curious. They're saying, what are your thoughts on NFTs? I don't know why Netflix engineering would ask such a question. I don't entirely know what they'd want to sell. Are they trying to sell like trading cards, something like that for some of the shows that they have? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> it's just a fucking weird question to ask. I feel like PS, PS, little side note. There's a new Cuphead. Series coming. Mugsy, Looks pretty good. Take a look. Con evil. Cuphead, I'm not so sure. You know what I do when I'm not so sure? I double down. What does that even mean? <laughs> that was social commentary, by the way. Do you know what I do when I'm not sure? I double down. NFTs, not related, but related to Netflix. So coming soon to Netflix, all right? Cuphead show! Looks dope. Uh, if Netflix launched their game service, they would probably bundle NFTs with it. Ooh, that's right. Um, what else? What else NFT have I come across? Are these yeti stupid or what? How about... Hey, Chucky. Hey, Chucky. An Man NFT... Hot, Chucky. Animated series starring the fucking Board 8 Yacht Club avatars co-produced... As a co-producer, co co uh, directed, two chains is involved. All right, <laughs> the Red A family. Look, it straight up is just an animated series starring. Fuck, I can't even. Fuck. This is last year, by the way, November twenty seventh. But we didn't. We weren't really. We were paying attention. We knew, but we didn't know how bad it was gonna get. We just thought maybe it'll just go away on its own, but it didn't. And artists everywhere are jumping all over it, which is, you know, like, it's understandable. Mike Shinoda. Mike Shinoda. Linkin Park. Mike. Oh, my God. It's a meme tune. It is. Yeah. It's like Tiggle, but uh, not Tiggle. But was, is it Tiggle, that series that we watch on stream? It looks, it reminds me of that. Uh, it's so bad. I, wa I watched some, I, some, uh, uh, some parts of that series, and it was just terrible. Anyways, uh, Mike Shinoda uh, of Linkin Park fame. Um, also uh, pretty well known. A tick tone, that's right. Uh, pretty well known Twitch streamer. Uh, also supports NFTs. He made, a, made some comments that were pretty silly. <laughs> he said, uh, Real Saturday convo. I'm surprised by so much negative said about gamers, by gamers, about NFTs. Can we chat? All of, the, of all the applications, gaming is a place that players can benefit a lot from blockchain. Do they not know? Do they not know yet that there are eco friendly NFTs? Let's talk. Keep it civil. And then he starts talking a little bit about it. But then he makes a comment here that was pretty funny. Uh, let me see. Uh, ma -ma -ma -ma. Uh, gamers don't trust the devs. Let me see. People are still learning NFTs. They still be. Okay, wait, hold on a second. They need to delete one of these. One of three. Uh, the games that win. Okay, here we go. So gamers don't trust the devs. They see NFT and they think this is another way to squeeze a dollar out of us. The games that win will be the ones who give to the community, not take. See, that's that's a little that's a little naive, right? We know that that's not how it works. Yeah, sure, that's not how it works. <laughs> the games that will be the ones who give to the community, not take, are absolutely incorrect. History history will tell you. That the whales are always the ones, the ones who are just like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll fucking throw some money on this. I don't give a fuck. And it's, that's it. They make plenty of money off it and they don't have to worry about it. Anyways, um, I don't, I didn't live through the free, free to play tidal wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, he follows up and he says, you know why Everyone wants to talk about gaming and NFTs. I want to post a follow up. And he says, uh, while heated discussions was inevitable, which is true. You cannot have a, you cannot have a discussion about NFTs basically anywhere, which is why I'm glad I'm hosting this, uh, alone with only chat. We only chat, because <laughs> otherwise this would be a very heated discussion if we were doing this in Discord. Uh, and so he's saying, 
keep in mind, I'm not a blind supporter of NFTs, crypto, etc. There are people of all walks of space. Among them, there are bad actors and greedy con artists, which is true. And there are insanely bright, good, imaginative people, which is the minority. I hate to say it. Um, but he did say something here that I, I, I hearted it because I thought it was very true. It's like, at the same time, our job as creators is to learn and imagine, take the position of what might work instead of why won't this work? After all, this form of technology is verifiably new. And I agree with that statement. It's, as an artist, it's like you're always trying, as a content creator, we're always looking for ways to make money because we want to keep making content, right? So it's like, we're not really necessarily trying to get richer. We're just trying to make fucking money. Uh, right, right, are we NFT? No, don't worry, right, we'll add NFT soon. Is that what you meant? <laughs> not surprised Mike Shinoda is uh, into trying it though. I remember when Linkin Park had a pretty crazy web presence back in the early 00s, but, uh, when it wasn't super popular yet. Um, I would say that Linkin Park has always been on the cutting edge of like fan service stuff, right? Like they had the Linkin Park um, like fan club. I think I was part of it for like a minute and they would just send you random shit. Um, their production on like their live DVDs and all that stuff was always like amazing. Like I've always felt like they did really good for like in terms of like uh, uh, pushing that, uh, like what fans want and everything. And experimenting with all this um and you know it, it it extends out to what he's doing now and let me show let me show you what he's doing actually when in, in the uh nft verse he's not just talking about nfts he's been participating in it um the game industry's up trying to milk us yeah absolutely so he's got these he's got these called ziggurats right and or maybe it's ziggurats i'm not sure but ziggurats and uh what it is is a um Kind of like a like a like a raffle system or like a dice roll system where or a gotcha system where you have like different traits that can be associated with each one of these NFTs, not just in the way they look, but also with the audio that accompanies them. Each one of these comes with a six minute and forty four second long song that is procedurally put together out of a number of stems. So if I were to pop this open and take a look at it, it would say that I have four attributes down here. You're all gamers, you know what this means. The attributes show that the drums track is drums number 12, 7% chance. The melody tra track is melody number 4, 11.44% chance. Music track is number 5, 11.32% chance. Percussion number 6 with a 12.66% chance. So all those procedurally put together pieces, uh, or randomly selected pieces, put together to form a song. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but it's just a, it's just a beat. So each one of these is basically some variation of the same loop. Yeah. Different sounds. There's that vocal sample again. Like this, then you got the show. I'm the chef's choice. I'm the zao with. I mean, some of them sound pretty dope. Procedurally generated song from Stems Tech, exactly. Yeah, some of it sounds pretty dope. Um, how much is he selling for though? Let me see. Sort by rank. This is the most. This is the most expensive one. Rank number one. Not for sale. Not for sale. Here's one that's uh, selling for ten million. Uh, no, that's not ten million. That's like ten thousand. Tez. Uh, let me check real quick and see. They put that. They put that period zero 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 in there. Fucks me up. <laughs> um, 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 buy for ten. Yeah, it's ten thousand. Ten thousand. Okay, so ten thousand. Tez. What is that? That's um. Uh, I'm not going to do this shit in my head. 10,000 Tez to USD is... Um, Tezos to USD is... It's a Tanzanian dollars. $3.50. Uh, $33,233.69. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So, um, yeah, if you want, if you want, you could buy that song. And you also get the avatar. And then you could just, you know whatever <laughs> we're not doing that stuff uh so <laughs> here's a real question if you own the nft that song and get copyright strike for playing it due to someone else's being close to what then that's a great question i don't know <laughs> that's a great question no idea um procedure aka low effort music content farm thank you kimmy that's yeah wow pretty much um and he's a fan of NFTs. Funny that uh, you pay me thirty-three thousand. I'll say i'm a fan as well yeah 33 grand that's for one song that's the number that's the number one like that's the number one uh, um, uh, rarity track that's available. The other ones are not available. Procedural music based off of samples. Yeah, just just engineer yourself out of a job, Mike Shinoda. Please do that. <sighs> engineer us all out of a job. 
Even actress, actors, actresses like Evelyn Goria is interested. She's like, wow, what's this? Someplace female found a metaverse. Love seeing the future women uh, bu are building in the NFT space. Um, fucking Cheech and Chong <laughs> have their own NFTs. These are PFPs, profile pictures that they're selling. Uh, there's 10,420 NFTs. No one's surprised by that number. Um, and they were gonna, they're going to be dropping on the 25th or something. They're 25th or 26th. So you could buy your, you could buy your own. They're really shitty. Like, I mean, I love Cheech and Chong, right? I fucking love these guys, but like, these are equal, just as sh I thought it was going to be something cool, but it's just as shitty as everything else. Just as shitty as everything else. Uh, Twitter going hard really made the scam succeed. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so even, even fucking Cheech and Chong, homies in dreamland, they call their series dropping on the 25th or so. Facebook and Instagram are looking at ways that they can incorporate NFTs into their marketplace so they can showcase and sell them. Once it hits, I mean, this is, this is, I, I wasn't, I, I haven't been saying that you guys have to prepare for this to be everywhere. Like, it, I wasn't trying to be a dick about it, right? I was being a dick about it, okay? Because I want you guys to know, like, this shit's gonna be everywhere. But, I'm, but now let me just go ahead and reiterate again that if it makes it to Facebook, like if it makes it to this level, that's when it's definitely over. That's when we're we're trapped. There's no no going back, and we'll be sitting in it for like probably at least a year, a couple years until everybody figures out either the either the tech advances to the point where it's actually useful, like actual use cases actually useful. It fixes all the multitude of problems and scales well and everything, or people see that it's just not even worth their time when they end up backing off. Um, we have, you can actually make a procedurally noise generator in Blender that can play music just like that. Just like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm no, uh, I'm no coder, but I know it's relatively easy to tech to, to code. I don't know anybody. Nobody under 87 uses Facebook at, the, at this point. Yeah. All this deserves maximum, bro. Yeah. It's Second Life all over again. Remember when there was Apple Store there too? That's right. Yep. Second Life. Second Life 3.0. But yeah, Facebook and Instagram are also looking at the. Uh, um, at the possibility of incorporating it. And, and remember, Facebook has a very robust marketplace that currently exists. Third life. Damn, let's fucking get second. Yeah, second one. I think it's second life 2.0. Damn, miss. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, Facebook already has a very robust and feature, featurific uh, marketplace. Instagram has uh, their shop set up on a per profile basis. That's pretty good. That's really good. Um, so they already have the infrastructure in place. They just have to figure out how to further expand upon it in order to support you know, uh, uh, you know, wallets, digital wallets, and um, and NFTs and all this shit. So, shout out looking for more software for blockchain NFTs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That footage of the metaverse empty crypto rave is hilariously bad. Oh, did you wait? Is it in here? No, but I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, I have. Um, I think I have. Let me see. I don't know if this is necessarily in. Uh, is this in no crypto voxels in the crypto voxels? Oh, this is crypto voxels. Fuck, who knows? This is this is another rave slash something that was happening in a place called Crypto Voxels. You can see everybody's got their super customized skin. <laughs> uh, what's this Alex Moss thing? Hold on. Um, <laughs> this is the meta. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Here, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. This is the one I saw. Uh, this is this is the metaverse, a live rave happening right now in Decentraland. Yeah, so, like I said, this is this is uh, um, Crypto Voxels, another metaverse. There's multiple metaverses. <laughs> Excuse me. And this is uh, um, Decentraland, which is another metaverse. So, whenever you see metaverse, everywhere. remember last week we were talking about CES metaverse, 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 metaverse. Have you had your metaverse this morning? Like it was all over the place. <laughs> this is why. So here it is. Oh, Kimmy, can you link me? Can you link me the VR chat one? The one that you, that, where you were DJing? Please? <laughs> I would love, I would love to show people because every time I see fucking metaverse shit, it's just like, wow, they're trying to do what VR chat has been doing. <laughs> they're trying really hard to make something as awesome as VR chat and failing miserably. What defines metaverse versus something like VR chat? Generally curious. The name, I guess they're just they're just calling it metaverse. But you could technically say that uh, that uh, uh, that VR chat is a metaverse like, if it's going to be a category or something. Um, they're basically like social MMOs, really. So here's here's uh, Kimmy performing 
uh, at a um, uh, at a, at, a, at a VR chat nightclub. <laughs> the big difference. <laughs> <laughs> that's her she goes by jackknife uh that's her little fucking cow up there on this stage <laughs> but look at this this is insane the music should be dmca oh, okay but yeah <laughs> so uh and there's more i mean there's there's other concerts that have happened in this space wave does a couple of good ones too i've had theirs saved for a while because i knew we'd come i knew that we would eventually talk about this wave does uh they had like like but justin bieber do i have to mute this for sure but they had justin bieber i know i'm sorry but they, they had him do a show and it was very much like fortnite how fortnite has their in-game concerts and everything right um so yeah like this is this is this is more and more becoming a very common thing i feel like right now it's a very small user base just like in general vr has a very small user base um and so people who are are partaking in metaverse and all that stuff is going to be an even smaller user base than that. So there's also conventions of VR chat. Yep. Yeah. Those default looking shaders. <laughs> that feeling when I have health model a club room way back in the past, I wanted to see metaverse rave. Jesus guys, at least give the artist a fucking venue stage. Um, VR platforms popping up for concerts. Yeah, that's it's very cool, especially, you know, in, in a pandemic, which I think we're still in. I'm, I lost track now. Um, but yeah, especially when we're in a, in a pandemic ish, like it's it, these types of things are, are, are popped up out of necessity. Right. Hot take. But I've always loved that Fortnite was doing with their events. It's a cool space. It's not really been explored, but they have been doing it properly. I think so, too. Yeah, I agree with that. 100 percent agree. Like it's it's at first I was like, that's weird. Right. But I don't play Fortnite, so I don't know what the what the culture is like. But then the more and more that I see them do these these crazy concerts that are like larger than life, where you're in, it's fucking rad. Um, it was full it was a full on furry convention too with dealers, dens, and everything. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, Fortnite announced a few years ago he wants to be a metaverse. Oh, I'm sure that's definitely in the end. I mean, with all the built in assets they already have, absolutely, absolutely, for sure. Um, moving on though. There's still, <laughs> there's still more. Uh, this morning was it this morning? This morning? Uh, let me check the date. What is today? Yesterday. <laughs> Tell them what day it is. Uh, yesterday, uh, Twitter announces that they are going to be um, uh, releasing a feature that will let you have hexagonal avatars. Why don't we? Why don't we take a look? We got one minute, right? Let's let's take a listen. Let's take a look. See. Stop! 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 Oh my God! Stop! 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 Okay. Why wow, didn't you make it that far, did I? All right, so. I've been hanging out with the um, on my photography side. I've been masquerading as a as an NFT, um, uh, 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 um, like I'm interested, right? Like I'm just kind of just kind of going following a bunch of people that are, that have dot eth at the end of their their Twitter handle, and people that every fucking day, every fucking day, they always they always say GM good morning every day. It's really weird. No one else on my feet. I follow porn stars. I follow models. I follow fucking gamers. I follow fucking congressmen. No one. No one says GM good morning except for these fucking NFT folks. That's how you know that you're in the, when you're in the circle. <laughs> GM means game master. <laughs> uh, people with uh, hexagonal PFPs got to retire them. Really? Thought it was game master. Uh, hold on, let me put this over here so I can take a look at this. What is this? What'd you got for me? I should get it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Anyways, let's keep watching.
Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, oh, man. NFT profile pictures. Show off your prize possessions. That's right. You connect your wallets to Twitter. Very secure. And then you pay $2.99 a month for Twitter Blue. And then every day from that day forward, you have to wake up every morning and you have to set up your GM. You have to tweet out GM. Okay. All right. Now, <laughs> GM, all you guys, GM, GM, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> You're going to take a screen. <laughs> so, um, so, let me tell you, we were exploring ways in, in Discord exploring ways to see if, if, if it's possible to get uh, to mint an entity for cheap or at least make it accessible to this service and between top and 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 jordan uh they discovered that um you can uh uh mint or basically upload your image to open and without listing it which means cost free and as far as we can tell electricity free and by that by electricity free i mean like you're not paying for the actual like you know uh, tree destroyed forest destroying part of it right you're just uploading to their servers costing them money open sea so if you're looking for like taking them down maybe take a partner and you could select them that's right so you could uh, you start to pay 299 a month but like honestly i kind of want a hexagonal avatar man like it's kind of like the new hotness i know that's their whole point but if i can upload literally any picture for free and get hexagonal avatar then fucking awesome so that's that's what we're hoping but we're waiting we're waiting right now to see if everything links up because i guess right now it's not quite there yet um but <laughs> and you get blocked yes yes that's the other thing <laughs> so no sooner, no sooner did we get this new service that, um, this new feature, did somebody already uh, develop a way to block these accounts. Uh, this is better tweet deck here. Uh, Octagons of where it's at, I know. Yeah, so better tweet deck, they have, they, they have their own mute accounts who use NFT avatar integration. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy, by the way, for sending this to me. Uh, and also, and also, thank you, uh, Red, because he's got a follow-up too. But yeah, so you can mute accounts using... So this is the only problem. Like, I want a hexagonal avatar for free, right? Just to do it. Uh, but, you know, then I might end up getting blocked. So. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then, and then, I mean, the, this line is actually pretty funny. Let me find... Where's that? Uh, where's that fucking... There it is. Thank you. Thank you, Red War Machine, for throwing me this link. Is a good one. USB device not recognized. What USB device? Uh, it says this is actually really good grift on Twitter's part. They made the NFT bros pay for the privilege of being mass blocked. <laughs> uh, it, like, I'm gonna hexagon for the troll fam. Do it. Do it. Do it. NFT PvP FPs are worse than anime avatars. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So, uh, did I see this? What is this? www.youtube. What? What is this? Let me see. This is uh, Rodex for Chrome that changes Twitter NFT avatars to Subway Jared. No way. Oh, my God. Yeah. Fuck. See, man, but it's so cool to have a hexagonal. The shape is great. I want the shape. I don't want the Jared. Shit. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty fucking funny. So, yeah. He wanted to Jared, yeah. He he went to Jared. <sighs> mm. So obviously some of this NFT stuff is like is starting to kind of parse and get into our own um our own uh, uh, communities and everything. Uh <clears throat> Troy Baker, who is uh who is a voice actor, he was in Last of Us, uh Last of Us 2. Or most of it, I think, and <laughs> and other games. Uh, he's also on the Play Win Lose podcast, PWL podcast with uh, Alana Pierce, Mike Bithel, and Troy Baker. Um, it was P P Play Win something. Um, <clears throat> pretty much every game, Death Stranding. Yeah, pretty much every game. Yeah, um, the podcast was good. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, so he says he says we're gonna get there. Um, 
So he, he came out on Monday, Tuesday, early this week, and he says, I'm partnering with Voice First NFT to explore ways where together we might bring new tools to new creators to make new things and allow everyone a chance to own and invest in the IPs uh, they create. We all have a story to tell. You can hate or you can create. What will it be? <laughs> Play, watch, listen. I was close. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ew, right? <laughs> so he posted this, and it was it was uh, it was met with um, with not a lot of fanfare. <laughs> Let me guess, they chose hate. <laughs> yeah. So he got shit on a lot for this. Um, and then, and then, and there's a lot more. There's a, there's a lot. Yeah. Oh man. I've never seen a ratio like this. Um, I, yeah. 13,000. If you don't, if you don't know what a ratio is, whenever you see someone's at low ratio or whatever, you're basically comparing like the number of likes, the number of retweets to the number of comments or something. Right. Uh, and whenever you see a discrepancy, especially when you see a lot of quote retweets, then you know that somebody fucked up, <laughs> you know, that somebody fucked up. Um, <laughs> And he even got shit on by like every other famous voice actor. So wait, there's more though. So there's more. So he did follow up. He did follow up and he did say, he was just like, okay, hold on. He says, I always want to be part of the conversation. Even if sometimes that finds me in the midst of a loud one. Appreciate y'all sharing your thoughts and giving me a lot to think about. I'm just a storyteller. I try to tell my story to whomever here and hoping I can find others do the same. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm grateful that there are those who are passionate about this, their stance and not only feel safe to express that, but also have the means to do so. The hate slash create part might've been a bit antagonistic. Uh, Rob Paulson got hopped on to the other week and they're beating your ass in the quote retweets. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he took a baseball bat to the face. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Pretty bad. So, uh, <clears throat> so he's a regular, he's, he's a co-host of the PWL podcast with Alana Pierce and Mike Bithel. Um, and is it Bithel? I think it's Bithel. Um, and, uh, and he, he gets on there and what's nice is that, you know, they have a, they have a, they have a functional social working relationship, Alana and Mike and, uh, and Troy. So they could just talk to him. Right? They're just like, you kind of fucked this up. You want to explain yourself? <laughs> and he did. So he's got a couple things to say about this. Of course. I can guess the difference I know though you is, though. That's the thing is that you know me. But the fact is, is I don't know 450,000 people, you know? So, but, but this is being broadcast out to those people. And I have to be responsible about that. And I have to be like, and, I, and this is the problem. We just finished watching Peacemaker, and so I was feeling, you know, I was like, Dad, let's have fun with this. I was in a fun place, and I was like... I'm sorry, man, but I love that. I just got done watching Peacemaker, and so he's like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> and I was hyped. I was like, fuck yeah, peace and justice. Look, there's a lot of hate about this, and, and my desire is to create. So what do you want to do here? Do we, do we want to do this, or do we want to create? I was trying to be inspiring, as opposed That's to... That's what I figured. I was like, he's trying to inspire it down. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he's try. He was trying to be inspiring, but he did. But he did it like Peacemaker would try to be inspiring. <laughs> it's at this moment he knew he fucked up. Yeah. So he has, he has more though. He he does talk a little bit more about how he got involved. And I think this is a very important thing to to listen to. This part here. <clears throat> like I still don't have that context. I've seen their tweets, which are obviously like a company that's clearly terrified. Um, but I still don't understand from your perspective what is what is this voice first NFT? What is it? Uh, making sure that I don't, you know, nothing that they told me was proprietary or confidential and everything they have is up on their site. This company came to me and was like, hey, we've created a, you know, we're an AI company that's creating text to speech, but we wanted to make it, you know, no robo voices. And we also know that that's typically a very bespoke boutique higher end tool that's that's reserved for top tier studios. And we want to make this available to independent creators and people who may not be necessarily be able to afford that. And we're looking for people to be able to supply voices for that system. Would you be interested in that? And I was like, yes. And we had a conversation about how does it, we, we've been going back for weeks about this. So this wasn't like, so he's, he's, I, I have seen people like him or heard people like him, I should say in other, uh, in like Twitter spaces, for example, where <clears throat> we're like, they're, they're passionate about what they do. And they think that this is like, oh, this is this this could be a thing that could help people. Like this service is supposed to be, this service is supposed to be a service that will allow people to basically get a voice font where they could type in things and it'll and it'll autom and it'll, it'll generate that person's voice or something that sounds similar to it. I made a couple this morning. Let me see. And so Stanley proceeded with minting useless things and eventually destroyed the planet. 
Hi, everybody. Be sure to join my Discord for airdrops on our upcoming Bikini Bottom PFP NFTs. <laughs> now, before you diss this, before you diss this, don't diss it. Don't diss it yet. <laughs> don't diss it yet, because I didn't get that from the voice first sight. We're going to talk about that. So, like I said, I have seen, I have heard, I've, I've, I know people like this who are very passionate about what they do, and they, they're targets, right? They're targets for, for people who are trying to basically make a quick buck. They're trying to like, they, they don't have a long-term plan for their crypto whatever related uh, business. They're just like, yeah, we're going to do this and do this. And then, you know, if things succeed, then we'll, we'll reevaluate from there. And then they end up basically fucking just disappearing. Uh, <laughs> urge rising. <laughs> Blue light face cream. God damn. Yeah, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. Um, so... So let me scroll down a little bit here. So we have a voice first. We have voice first, which is who he was partnering with. Um, and voice first right now today, actually, they announced that they have their own. Um, they have their own profile pictures coming up. <laughs> I don't know if this music is 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 safe, uh, <laughs> but they have their own profile pictures coming up for voice first. They got shit on though. They're getting scammed. That really doesn't. Only for their voice to show back up the AI system that were copied over from the original. If um, <clears throat> anything, adds pretty cool for how small their data sample is for some of those voices. Yeah, that's right. So, 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 so. So that's voice first NFT. Uh, they they have their own site. You can go here and you can go and check things out. But really, what you want to go to if you're really interested in that kind of in that kind of project um, or this kind of technology is probably go to 15 AI or 15 A. I, oh shit, was it 15 AI? God damn it. There you go. This is where I got those those clips I just played earlier today. I could type in anything I want. Uh, let's see. Um, and then I hit generate. And then it'll give me a couple different options here. <clears throat> and then I have to raise the volume and then you could hear it. Balls in your mouth. Balls in your mouth. Balls in your mouth. <laughs> So, <laughs> they have a number of things on here. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, My Little Pony, TF2, Stanley Parable, which is where I got that one, Doctor Who, Undertale, um, and even even within each game, there's a handful of them. Now, they're not all great. They take voice samples. So they have 72 minutes of voice samples from Gladys. Uh, if you click on I believe if you click on it or click down here in the Read More area, let me see. There's another, there's somewhere on here where they have the list of, uh, of upcoming um, uh, voices and everything. But but that's, that's, that's not what we're going for right now. What happened was the uh, the creator of this site uh, discovered in the co in the code or somewhere in Voiceverse that they were using their technology. Voiceverse was using their technology, right? Um, <clears throat> so basically, it's a fucking scam. Now that was not that was not known when Troy and Mike and Alana did their podcast. That was not known at that time, right? Otherwise, you know, there would have been a complete contextual context would be completely different, completely different. So, so yeah, again, bear that in mind too when we talk about this. Um, so we have, oh, here you go. Troy Baker back NFT firm admits using voice lines taken from another service without permission. I don't know if you, you know, if they're gonna actually load your gamers down. <laughs> uh, but over here we have voice first. Voice first, they actually posted their own apology saying that we have done a poor job explaining our relationship with all the voice actors we work with. We apologize for this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it says, we mentioned no additional legal hassle because every legal detail is already dealt with between voice first and the voice actor and the end consumer <laughs> doesn't have to deal with it. This was poor wording on our part, blah, 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 blah. So they already admitted directly that they're sorry. Yes, they did accidentally use code from the site. Whoever was, I'm sure somebody probably linked it below or something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, here it is. Hey, hey, 15 AI, we are extremely sorry about this. The voice was indeed taken from your platform, which our marketing team used without giving proper credit. Chubbyverse team has no knowledge of this. We will make sure this never happens again. Which means when they made the, the promotional video for this, which is basically a little chubby, whatever fucking character, um, they used the site the same way that I used the site to make... To make a Stanley parable. And so Stanley proceeded with minting useless things and eventually destroyed the planet. I fucking love that. Uh, <laughs> say, they went to the site and they made and they made the fucking audio for their fucking to promote their own voice AI service. 
<laughs> so Troy Baker has not said anything. He's not said anything since. So I don't know if he's because he, in the podcast, it doesn't seem like he really says that he's going to not he's going to distance himself from him. But I'm pretty sure after everything else came out, he's probably going to distance himself from them. At least I hope he does. Um, I understand he wants to get into something new and try to help artists and all that shit, whatever, whatever, whatever it is that he wants to do. But how many times are, are we all like, hey, man, like some of a lot of these things are fucking scams. And then when people hook up with these with these industries and it's like, yeah, see, it's a fucking scam. It's not just chance that you came across that. It's because that's the predominant uh, 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 business model. <laughs> That's that's the that's the business model that people use. So <clears throat> I'm shocked this happened in a space known for scamming and thievery. <laughs> I know what? <laughs> How? How is that possible? So jeez, it's like bathwater with voices. Exactly. Are NFTs actually enforceable anywhere? All of them are available online. Uh, who's stopping anyone from using it as they please? Nothing. Nothing. There's really nothing. Like you could use it. It's not about. It's not about the the art. Um, it's, I, I mentioned this last week, I think it's not when people buy into NFTs, like they're not really in most cases buying it for the art. They're buying it for what they, they perceive as the prestige of owning one, which is why profile pictures is so popular because people want to have known that they are part of this. They're part of this club, the NFT club. And so that's why, that's why, that's why the popularity is so heavily skewed towards uh, profile pictures and why you see all these profile picture scams and everything because that's the popular elements of nfts it still exists in other forms you could buy art you could buy you know gifts or something you could buy old ass fucking memes um the uh, uh the burning um the burning house girl you know the she's like looking back and, she, and like all like fuck, i'm gonna look it up <laughs> i can't describe fucking memes burning house girl meme there we go this one <laughs> This one, uh, this, she sold this, this meme, the original for like 400, 500,000 or something like that. Uh, the, uh, uh, overly, overly attached girlfriend, she sold hers for like 400,000 or some shit. Um, bad luck. Brian sold his for like 40,000. Like, um, Yon, Yon cat sold for like hundreds of thousands of dollars and also tons of derivatives. So we've already gone through, and this was like months ago like probably almost a year ago now, we've already gone through majority of the good old memes, right? Sure, we don't have Numa Numa guy yet, right? Techno Viking, I haven't seen him anywhere. But for the most part, we've gone through a lot of the old memes. And so then we kind of evolved into profile pictures, I guess. Don't give them ideas. <laughs> Take the girl, the copyright of the image stays uh, with those people with the burning house girl with the overly attached girlfriend. Copyright never moves and is never part of the NFT mint or sale unless unless they actually say that you get access. You can get that. The smart the smart contracts are supposed to be set up in a way that you can um, assign rights or some shit to the image. Uh, the artist can basically hand over image. I mean, just like me, like I, I set that up like, like that. When I was selling my uh, my photo last year, uh, my listed it, I put in that, yeah, you could have it because it's up to the artist. So I could just say, yeah, you can have it and it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, so it's it's the artist's discretion when it comes to that. But most artists will not give away. They won't give it away. Like they'll, they'll they, especially if it's an art piece. For me, it was like one one picture out of like 40,000 pictures that I have. So I was like, yeah, dude, you can have it. <laughs> it was like no big deal. <laughs> so <clears throat> did you sell the Lee Britney alone video? Yeah, this assures me. Actually, uh, I actually don't understand the point of them at all. If they gave you rights to the work, I would at least acknowledge their use. Like I said, it's it's about buying your way into this club, this social club right now. That's that's effectively what it is. And then and then once you're in the club, you have to bully everybody else who's not in the club and make them feel like shit for not being part of the club. Right. That's usually how it works. Uh, well, yes, copyright agreements are separate from NFTs. They work in whatever way the contract dictates. Many artists who do commissions will provide the copyright for the provider images, but will keep the publish and for advertising. Yeah, so it's, it's up to the, uh, it's it's totally up to the artist. It doesn't have anything to do with NFTs. Like they could just say, yeah, you buy it and you get it. It's just an incentive to purchase. It's just a perk. Um, it's the sneeches on the beaches. <laughs> the sneeches on the beaches. By the way, what up, d -pards? Sorry, I saw that earlier. Uh, <laughs> so... There's still a lot of shenanigans that are going to continue going on within the NFT space. Uh, we've already seen, I mean, going back to Alana Pierce, Alana Pierce, um, she, this is, I mean, this is basically followed up from uh, after 
the Troy Baker thing. She says, and I'll read it first before I show you the picture. She says, an extremely predictable news. I've been informed that somebody has taken an image of me that I own, added a trademark porn logo to it, and minted it to sell for profit as an NFT. Naturally, I was not surprised. So this is, we've seen this before, right? Um, and she says, I cannot wait for the lawsuits. She's not the only one. She's not the only fucking one. Uh, here is a YouTuber, Saber Sparks who also says, somebody minted my YouTube channel as an NFT without my permission and is trying to sell it on OpenSea. This NFT craze is legit evil and just gets worse with each passing day. Now, this is a little alarmist. This is pretty alarmist, right? <clears throat> He's wording it as if, like, somebody can sell the rights to my YouTube channel. It's literally the link. It is literally the link. Stake the web, right? Stake the web right here. That collection is now gone. So I think OpenSea probably took action on it, which is rare. <laughs> they took action on it. They ended up like deleting the entire account collection or whatever. Or the stake the web guys decided to go and pack it up and leave before they got in any kind of trouble or something like that. Basically just, just rugging themselves and disappearing. Um, but it is, <clears throat> it's happening. I mean, right now, this is an open C like live listing. Uh, current price is $7,525,230 if you want a a trading card, a virtual trading card um, for that links. It's a link. It's a link to here. To here. This to, to this, it's this link. That, that, that's what you, that's what you get. You're, get. you're getting the graphic too. You're getting the cool card. You, the card is really awesome. You're getting the card, right? So you shouldn't feel like you're leaving with nothing. It's a virtual card, sure, but you can make it a profile picture, I guess, if you want uh, <laughs> or something. <clears throat> but yeah, this this is something that's available for sale. I think I actually made a sale for 1925 ether ether, which is. Um, I mean, right now it's like, it's like 20 bucks or something like that. But I mean, a couple of days ago, it was like $40,000 or something, right? I don't know. But, <laughs> uh, the fact that people are even trying this shit in the first place is the biggest issue of all, especially for smaller artists work. Yep. Should mint, mint some old $2 sheets and sell them for more than $2. Man, that's fucking genius. Twitter thread relating to how much art gets stolen, sold to OpenSea, detected via DeviantArt's arts new tools. Yeah. No, no. I've, 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 I've seen it. Is that new? Is that the new one? Is that new? Anyways, I already know. I just, so let me just explain it real quick. Um, I'll try to grab it. Uh, DeviantArt has a service because artist theft is so rampant. And let me just scroll through here so you can see. Like these are, uh, these are, let me, how about this? How about this? Give me a YouTube, how about this? Dr. Disrespect. Let me see if he has anything on here. Dr. Disrespect. Here we go. Decentraland. Uh, what is this? What are they buying here? You're buying... That's just and it's ENS name, an ENS name. I don't even know what that is, but you could buy whatever that is for 0.35 ether. So one third of about 2,500 bucks, 800 bucks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is not, this is not necessarily new, new, but I think Coke Carnage is in here too. I mean, if, if you find somebody, yeah, here we go. Here's his marble card or whatever. Same service as the last one, marble card. You could buy this for 125 bucks and you own the link to his Twitch channel. <laughs> ENS equals DNS on blockchain. God, even more useless. <laughs> His logo was sold, being sold open seat. Yeah, I think that's probably gone now. Yeah. Um, it's a stream clip. Yeah, here he goes. A stream clip. You can buy it as a clip. Oh, this one's not actually listed anywhere. Yeah. Oh, Pokey. There we go. Pokey. You can buy some Pokemon stuff. A clip. You want to buy a clip? Uh, let's see. Digistar star proof of concept. Oh gosh, what is this? I don't think they moved any product. Yeah, they don't move any product. So they're just listing things right now. Probably. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> fucking it. Well, this is this is like the All Star game here. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not on there. No, I'm not on there. I, I think. I think for me to get on there, I have to one be more popular. Two, be more outspoken against TFTs or TFTs uh, NFTs. Uh, search for it. And I already did. Top, top, top every day. Top every day. No, I think I have an account on here, but I don't think it pulls up anything. Yeah, no, it's nothing on here. Uh, oh, found on foundation. <clears throat> yep. So people are literally minting URLs and then selling them. And some people think that they're losing. I mean, I don't think he really thinks he's going to lose access to his YouTube channel. That would be completely absurd and very, very alarmist. But um, I mean, some people might feel that way. Weird. Be right back. Minting AKA my NFT. Yeah, do it, man. Do it. <laughs> B.O.P. Money Sinks. Mr. Disrespect has a book out. Does he really, Mr. Disrespect? Who's going to put Mike on his NFT? Need to generate more nudes. Yeah! 
Maybe we should start selling brides against bridge. Oh, sorry, this is brides. Yeah, we should start selling bridges again. No, it's like the stars thing. Remember, everyone was selling. You were selling like a, uh, like this star is yours and this, you know, whatever it's constellation. Fucking crazy. Uh, does yeah? Does the Doctor Disrespects book have why he was banned? I'll buy it for that. Jesus. <clears throat> so to to follow up. Okay, so just to wrap up this part. We still have a little bit more NFT stuff, and then we're gonna move on. Like, we're seeing it fucking everywhere, and the reason why is not because like somebody linked um, a Vice.com uh, survey, like they surveyed surveyed two thousand developers or something, and like only X percent wanted anything to do with NFTs, and it was a very small percentage. But I, I want to tell you guys that that those kinds of surveys are useless because the developers don't really get to decide those things. It's the suits that decides those things. So if the suits decide, hey, this is something that we could probably make some money off of, and make the shareholders happy or the investors happy or whatever, then we got to work it into the game somehow. So it has nothing to do with the developers. They don't get a choice, and they could be mad. But their opinion does not matter in this case. And it sucks. It sucks. But that's the way it is. Uh, most Mostly artists and actors bitching their shit is, getting, is being put on OpenSea without their consent. Yeah. Yeah. And so... <clears throat> yeah, so to go back to DeviantArt, DeviantArt has a uh, a service that you could pay a couple few dollars a month, and they will actively um, uh, search out and find and link you to... Uh, um, link you sites that are selling your artwork as NFT, which is pretty dope if you use... Um, if you use DeviantArt, <laughs> I have an account on there that's like 25 years old. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, well, wow, that's a pretty cool service. Let me get on there and upload, I don't know, 2,500 pictures and hopefully they can find some. Developers can tank the system so they aren't powerless, but then they're out of a job though. Mm. Uh, NFT hype is greed. Blockchain though is a valid, great technology. That, that's that's the thing. And that's the thing. It's it's totally being washed by by this nonsense. Remember when like the cloud was a thing and everyone was like, man, fuck the cloud, fuck the cloud. Eh, I don't, I don't, why do I gotta be online all the time? All this stuff, right? And now it's just a given. Now it's just a given. Now we're like, what? I don't have Steam cloud saves? Because initially the whole cloud thing wasn't for anything particularly useful. It was like kind of useful, but nothing that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. Cloud saves changed the world. Holy shit. Now when I don't play a game for a long ass time, I can expect to actually retain my progress, right? AI still gets sprinkled in corporate like magic does with blockchain. Sure. <clears throat> cloud is still uses for you. Well, then you need to find a better use for it, man. Cloud saves, man. Come on. That's the best. But no, th I'm, I'm just pointing out that like 10 years ago, we would look at cloud shit. We're like, oh, God, please shut up about the cloud. Right. And now it's like it's like a mandatory part of almost everything that we do. Almost everything that we do. Right. If you have a, if you have an iOS, I don't know if Android does this, but if you have an iOS phone, it'll automatically offload shit for you, uh, including like if you have an iCloud account, you know, then your service, whatever you it'll offload all your images it'll offload apps that you're not using automatically uh, and all that shit just disappears, whether it goes into the cloud or it goes to a central server somewhere or if it goes into whatever. Uh, all that matters is that it pulls things off of my phone and puts them somewhere else so I can continue having space on my phone, on my device because of the cloud. Um, New meta is talking about meta on meta. <laughs> Except the cloud isn't bad for the environment, also not a scam. No one cares about the environment, though. That's I understand that you everybody cares about the environment, but nobody also cares about the environment. It goes both ways. All right. When there's money to be made, nobody cares about the environment. All right. So that's that's a complete that's a non-issue to the people who like NFTs. <laughs> it's a non-issue. And it sucks. Cloud is someone else's uh, a computer. Yeah, environment has nothing to do with it. Don't there's, there's there's new code coming out though soon, guys. Don't worry, Ethereum will be like really, really you know it'll be really good in the future. Um, I think it being a scam is an issue for scammers either. Fair. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> mm. So. To go back to Castlevania 35th anniversary NFT that they did. Remember, I showed you some of these. I'm just a recap. Uh, they have these really, really just like, well, first off, there's like, you know, here's a poster. That's, that's the in-game map for Castlevania. There are these little videos that you that they would play. They play some song, play some gameplay, 39 second video. It was just a, it was a clip. It was a highlight. No, no, it was just a clip. A compilation. That's pretty much it. Anyways, so this thing sold for 2.527 or 2.5, two and a half ether. 
Uh, and at the was this like seven days ago? Uh, so it was probably about three thousand then. So that's uh, fourteen. So it's about seventeen thousand um, dollars, real money. That yeah, yeah. I showed. I show, I'm just recapping. I'm recapping. I showed this last time that it was going up for sale, but now the sales are done, and they've made about one hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars from these. So the success of things like this will only further fuel other games developers to get in. Now, while some have had successes, others have not. We talked about this the other day. Ubisoft's in-game NFTs have made $400. We covered this when it first came out. Digits, they were their unique digital collectibles. They're basically just like, you know, hats, armor, skin, stuff like that. Uh, and they sold $400 fucking dollars. Uplifting dudes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, they, you, you, you win some, $160,000, you lose some, 400 bucks. But to be fair... No one gives a fuck about a, a fucking mask or something like that in any any of Ubisoft's games. No one cares, except for Trials. <laughs> but everybody knows Castlevania, right? Like this is this is a known IP, 35th anniversary. Uh, you still have issues buying digital goods in games? Just buy the game. <laughs> Just buy a digital copy of the game, man. The only way they give a shit about this, they let you move FBX files to uh to another one of their games. Yeah, if there's any kind of prop play cross platform support or whatever, cross game support, cross client support. But really that game breaker Lord Treat, that was hot fire. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I I wish I had it on hand. Um <clears throat> Well like I said, there's some ups, there's some downs. Most of them are downs. Uh USPS getting involved, every other artist getting involved. Um like there's more artists that I know of because I know people that are working with them that are going to be launching their uh, NFTs here in the next like, couple of weeks. Uh, and so it's 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 a thing. Like it's more and more people are doing it because they're getting on. They see it as an opportunity to expand out into new new and uncharted territory and everything. But there's a lot. There's a lot you got to understand on this shit. Like there's 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 a lot of uh, scaling issues. There's a lot of blah blah blah. Like, there's a lot of stuff that. Uh, that are just not quite there yet with the technology. Uh, and those are the reasons why people are so upset about it, right? <laughs> Can't wait for the DMC NFT wars. Fuck. I don't even know if they'll ever get that big, honestly. Netflix, Netflix if we sell enough NFTs this anime, uh, this anime we won't make the live auction. <clears throat> Do you know if you saw this brilliant thread yet? Let me see. Let's imagine making a dice game. Well, I don't see anything else here. <laughs> it's probably a good, pretty good read. Check it out if you like. Um, I have to. Yeah, I have a muted. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sometime last year, oh, or, or two years ago, or something like that. I, I, I he was just, just preaching, just so preachy. Like every fucking tweet was like some kind of motivational bullshit, and I was just like, dude, shut up. Like, I don't know who he is. I don't know anything about him. All I know is he fucking preached all the time. And I was like, you're fucking muted. And I never unmuted his ass. I was like, no, nope. I'll unmute him when I see this, this kind of stuff. But I can't, I can't. Anybody that's like hella preachy on Twitter, fucking mute. Done. Uh, <laughs> I got the link from Legendary, but no, not subs. I can't. Boy, I got you. What you, what you think you're doing? Let me see. I'll permit you run now. Permit whole There we go. Oh, I fucked up. I put the wrong name. Okay, I still see it. I still see it. Okay, cool. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna save it for myself. We're gonna talk about it in a minute. Um, bye -o. Okay. So. <laughs> oh wow! Sorry, I spelled the way wrong. <laughs> but I still got the link though. Um. Anyways. <laughs> and the link still came through. I don't understand why I didn't block you. Uh, <laughs> so moving on. <sighs> We had some acquisitions this week, this past week or so. A number of acquisitions, actually. Uh, we had um, we had Take Two. We'll get to the big one. We got we, we got Take Two, Take Two and Zynga combine. Bioshock, Borderlands, Mafia, Grand Theft Auto, NBA 2K, PGA Tour. <laughs> all those games, all under Take Two and more. Zynga mobile masters the pioneers of mobile gaming 
they're now teaming up to form well they're just teaming up and they're going to start making games or doing something in this space um and if you look, it says it take care, it take to uh, to acquire the all outstanding shares of Zynga for a total value of nine dollars and eighty six cents per share, three dollars and fifty cents in cash, and six thirty six in shares of Take Two common stock. When that means that, and this is right here, transaction represents sixty four percent premium to Zynga's closing share price on January seventh, twenty twenty two. So if you own Zynga stock, um, then you got a premium for it because of the acquisition. So they ended up paying more in order to get it, right? Um, are they Clash of Clans? Uh, that's King, I believe. Uh, so that's Blizzard, ABK. Um, what is, uh, they make Farmville or initially it was Farmville. Yeah. That was their biggest, their biggest game. They do have a clash of clans. Like, I don't think it's clash of clans though. That's, that's King. Um, uh, but I can't, yeah. Uh, no, don't worry. Hogwire. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. So anyways, uh, so this was the, this was the first, I mean, this would have been like big news if, you know, the other one didn't happen. <laughs> this would have been pretty big news. Um, but yeah, you guys probably already heard, right? You guys heard about this? Like, <laughs> mm. so yes, Activision. Another thing happened. What? Who? Activision and Blizzard and King will soon be a part of Microsoft's uh, gaming wing. They'll be part of the Xbox team reporting to Phil Spencer. This is a big, 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 big deal. It's one of the, I think this is like the largest acquisition at 69 point something billion dollars. Um, <laughs> this is going to give Xbox Halo, Overwatch, <laughs> um, Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> like like this this is gonna this is like all the big fps's are all gonna be underneath one one umbrella um and microsoft was yeah microsoft was reevaluating their activision blizzard relationship yeah it's pretty good pretty good outcome they got they got a deal they got a deal thrall for smash <laughs> doom guy and overwatch all the craft games yeah yeah I actually saw a tweet that said that Call of Duty uh, was still going to be on PlayStation. Yes, that tweet came from a fairly reliable source, actually. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, wait, I lost the link. <laughs> Anyways, the reliable source was from... Uh, it was uh, Phil Spencer. And he was talking about how he got off the phone with, uh, uh, with Sony folks, basically saying that they're going to continue to honor the... Um, cross-platform deals that they already have so microsoft kind of slapped sony in the face and saying that they uh, uh they'll give sony their scraps for basically pretty much so <clears throat> right now we know that blizzard is wrapped in turmoil there is so much negativity surrounding everything blizzard related they can't do anything this would be a great time for them to actually launch nfts actually some kind of nft support because they can't really get much worse honestly um but they are going to be uh, merging and it definitely feels like this is Bobby's way of of getting out of everything and getting paid because they're paying a premium for this. Let's first, first, let's look at what the alternatives are that that Bobby was looking into. It says. Mr. Kodak was, has been eager to change the public narrative about the company and in recent weeks has suggested Activision Blizzard make some kind of acquisition, including of gaming trade publications like Kotaku and PC Gamer, according to people familiar with them. The Activision spokeswoman, Ms. 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 Klasky, disputed that Mr. Kodak wanted to make the acquisitions. The spokesman for Geo Media, the parent company of Kotaku, Kotaku, declined to comment. PC Gamer did not respond. So they're being informed that he was throwing around the idea of buying <laughs> buying a media company so they could write positive articles for them um <laughs> oh for sure Bobby and the board is cashing out huge on this oh man yeah exactly let me buy some good publicity <sighs> so let me see so this morning they had a meeting 
yesterday morning they had a meeting, an all hands meeting, a campfire meeting, whatever they call it, a fireside meeting. Uh, and they first off, it was like a 16 minute meeting. Uh, he was late to the meeting. <laughs> He didn't address any of the concerns anybody had. He basically just like laid out all this like, you know, oh, I love Activision or I love this place and blah, 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 all this stuff, whatever. He's going to stay. He's he's made a comment that he's going to be staying on um, Kotaku Ardle. I know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a negative. It's a negative article, though. We're good. Uh, <laughs> well, great transition there. Uh, you didn't read meeting. I almost got excited. Well, he did say that he plans on staying on until... Um, uh, uh, until the transition, at least. But he hasn't necessarily said he's going to be gone. But we know he's going to be gone. We know he's going to be gone. He's going to be bought out of his shares, guys. He's done. Remember when he cut his his uh, his pay down to sixty two thousand five hundred because that was the minimum that his that he can get paid sixty two thousand five hundred. That was last year after everybody was railing on him for making too much money. And then we found out that after he lowered he lowered his 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 uh his his annual, but he still had millions of dollars worth of stock. Right. So. It says here, but da, 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 that stock is a lot more valuable today than it was yesterday because Kodak and Activision Blizzard got Microsoft to pay $95 per share in the acquisition. So he's actually going to leave with even more money. So instead, instead of fixing the problems, instead of fixing the problems at Blizzard or resigning, he just sold the whole bitch off. He just sold like, fuck it. Ah, you know what? Fuck it. It was a good run. Fuck these people. Sell it off. Cash out fucking bazillions of dollars. He told he told people at the uh, at the uh, fireside chat yesterday that they're going they're working hard. Try to make sure that everybody still has a job after the transition. So now if you work for Blizzard, you don't even know if you're going to have a job in a year. <laughs> one of the most one of the most like like reliable, like if you want to work somewhere at a game company. Yeah, sure. It sucks to work at Blizzard, right? But you could at least li stay there for a long time compared to other game developers that you just attrition of like two years. So you don't know. You don't know now. If they replace him, he gets a 300 million compensation. So he wins either way. Exactly. Yeah, he wins. Yeah, it's smart move. Still disgusting of him, but smart. Begrudgingly admitting it. Yep. Time for Bobby to build his own island. Fuck off for a few years. Please, 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 please. At $95 per, I and mean, he was 150 million initially. I and mean, it's like a 45%, 50% markup on the actual premium. Dude. He's going to walk away with like $225 million just in stocks. <sighs> What's this? The memes are on point. Oh, man, this is a good one. I like this one. Oh, this, this. <laughs> no one expects the Microsoft acquisition. Fucking beautiful. Mm. So good. That was a good one. <sighs> Meanwhile... Raven Software, their uh, their their QA uh, department, right? The QA department. Uh, anyways, Raven Software is trying to get unionized. So in the midst of all this shit, Raven Software is just kind of like, hey, we we're forming a union. Can you officially recognize us, please? You know, Raven Software. You know, like Hexen and shit. <laughs> they're trying. They're trying to slip that underneath. It's not gonna happen though. They're gonna go ignore it. They're probably gonna you know not do anything because nothing is going to happen at the company for the next year. Everybody who was looking forward to all these changes and everything, you could pretty much count on everything being put on hold until the end of the year when actual transitions, and everything start going into play. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cause Bobby just washed his hands of it, man. He's done. He doesn't give a shit. He's going to get $225 million at the end of the year. I don't know if that's the right number, but I know it's a lot. I know it's more than, a uh, hundred million dollars. Uh, Hex and Id Software now owned by the same pair of company. That's right. So, what about what about old Activision games? Right. We talked to Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. He says, you know, uh, I have a quote here. He says, uh, I was looking at the IP list. I mean, let's go. Spencer says, uh, King's Quest, Guitar Hero. I should know, but I think they got Hexen. Fuck yeah, dude. I would love to see a uh, a Doom style update to Hexen prototype. Absolutely, um, they own Crash Bandicoot now. You know Crash Bandicoot. They were like a, that was like originally a PlayStation mascot. The first PlayStation mascot now it belongs to Microsoft. That's fucking great. Um, hey, look at NFT profile Spyro. 
Yeah, new and good prototype would be huge. Yeah, there's there's a lot of possibilities. And I'm sure a lot of people are just like, please make my favorite game, whatever that is. I was like, Hexen. I mean, it's basically Doom with Magic. A modern Hexen. Absolutely. Um, do they have Doom, Hexen, and Quake now? I... Oh, I have to probably pull up the list of everything they get. I have no idea. A, Activision has a pretty long list. <laughs> uh, can uh, can Microsoft buy Epic so that we can have new Jazz Jackrabbit? Oh, hey. Chat by Epic. <laughs> God, that would be a, that would be a massive, a massive, massive, massive acquisition. Uh, but there's uh, there's good news though. The numbers are Bobby looking to make 390 million from his 3.9 million, 3.95 million shares he owns. See, damn. Mm a lot man um is this a Eurogamer link again oh I think Eurogamer is just down all right well okay there it is just slow uh so this is good news if you're a COD player like it's possible that they can rip they can um some high level employees said okay but it doesn't necessarily mean it's true but we could get away from the yearly the annual um COD factory where they're just pumping out a COD game every year with just minimal updates Maybe a couple new features, brand new cash shop, all that stuff. Like, <laughs> maybe, maybe no more like absorbing, uh, like the like the developers for Spyro. I think like we're working on a new COD or something. It's fucking crazy. They were just pulling every game developer that they absorbed, and eventually they would make them work on Call of Duty. Um, you thought you thought COD players liked buying <laughs> half finished games every year. <sighs> They set a standard, set a pretty low standard. So every every year when they come out with like a slightly more than mediocre game, they get praised for it. That's that's essentially how it works. Um, so yeah, we have some old old Activision games could come back. Call of Duty could break free of its yearly release schedule. Like this is like this is a lot of uh, whoa, excuse me. Uh, this is a lot of uh, of change that could happen to the games industry. Like this is not. <laughs> Yeah, this is not a uh, god damn. I mean, Take Two and and Zynga is like small fries compared to this. Like, this is a lot of IPs that are now kind of in limbo right now. I mean, even like StarCraft, which is why I'm wearing the hat today. Even like StarCraft could get revived somehow. Use the IP for something else. Blizzard is literally doing nothing. They are literally doing absolutely nothing. Okay, nothing. <laughs> why not scoop it up and try something new? You're helping Phil the StarCraft fan, please, please. Lyric is, Lyric responded to, uh, oh, I think right here, actually. Uh, no, he responded to uh, another tweet. This is the tweet that I was talking about, though. Um, but uh, he responded to this, uh, uh, Phil Spencer's tweet, and he was just like, please do something with with uh, uh, with StarCraft. There's a, there's a whole generation of Zoomers who have not experienced RTS, and they need a proper one. And I was like, that's a great pitch. That's a great fucking pitch. You know, like, like, talk to him, talk to him the way he wants to be talked to. Lyric, get him. Uh, Jesse, I know Jesse. Fuck, I love it. Uh, Mike Morheim retweeted something about StarCraft as well. Was it Lyric or somebody? I'm sure it'd be great. It would be great to see. I started watching StarCraft again. It's been a while, but I started watching StarCraft again. I just miss it. I just miss watching it. I, mean, I would love to see them do more with the IP uh, before it gets too old. Maybe another another remaster, remaster 3.0. Uh, but throughout all this, I mean, there's a lot of news circulating around uh, Xbox and Microsoft and everything. Um, but it wasn't great news for Sony because they lost like 20 billion dollars in market valuation <laughs> thanks to uh, thanks to Microsoft's announcement because of the lost faith. Like, and even even in the uh community even in the console community like they're like i mean if you're an xbox fan they're gloating you know <laughs> like they're gloating because like what the fuck does sony have left there's just not a lot it plays blu-rays but doesn't the xbox one do too no one gives a shit about that <laughs> i don't fucking know <laughs> you command cogger did a game uh did a game like starcraft ghost let's see oh yeah I uh, imagine Game Pass giving you a WoW sub too. That'd be a bunch of people try. Oh, absolutely. Sony has Bloodborne. Oh, they have Bloodborne. They have Bloodborne. They have uh, Horizon, which is now on PC or will be on PC. They have God of War, also on PC. <laughs> the Twitter spaces for the console fanboy must have been hilarious. It was so good. It was so good. But but regardless of how many exclusives you guys could come up with or games that are maybe 
mostly available on PlayStation. It's dwarfed by what's available for the Xbox right now, especially now that Microsoft owns everything. Um, yeah, important to know. Yeah, PC is still PC is still Microsoft exactly. So here's what we could see. I thought this was an interesting article. So this article goes into how because of the increase in value that occurred during the acquisitions between, uh, sorry, I feel weird when somebody else is talking and I'm talking like I see him talking out of the corner of my eye. Um, <laughs> but uh, because of the premium that shareholders got for both the uh, Blizzard deal and the Zynga uh, Take Two deal, this could lead to a sell-off. This could lead to more game, more big developers or more big companies trying to absorb smaller game devs or large game studios or large publishers in order to support, you know, maybe metaverse shit, which I think this mentions it too. Um, because that's where a lot of this shit's going. Like they're absorbing all this stuff because they want to be able to create the assets that they could turn around and turn into either a game or a service or a metaverse concept or NFTs or whatever. And so that's why we're seeing potentially a race starting with more and more companies trying to absorb and bring in more developers um, from the games industry. Uh, see, I've got to be honest. I thought Amazon would buy ActaBlizz. Cause they want uh, they wanted to get so much into gaming. Yeah, they're just slow. Monopolies, boy. But that's why we got my boy, Representative Jerry Nadler. Uh, he says, Activision Blizzard, already a gaming giant, has a pattern of bullying workers to evade accountability for rampant sexual misconduct. I expect this deal to be closely scrutinized to ensure that it won't harm American workers or competition. So. This is this is this is a U.S. representative um, that is basically saying that um, they're going to be looking into. I mean, they always look into every major acquisition, and this was a major one, um, so they're going to be looking into it. But don't expect anything to happen. This is this is basically basically just a um, procedures. Like they're just going to go through and check some boxes. He's going to say, "Oh, what's up, Bill Gates? What's going on?" And then that's pretty much it, buddy. <laughs> Probably nothing's going to happen. But but I mean, you know, they're going to they're going to talk about it. Um, oh, man. Let me, oh yeah, here's the here's the actual the actual article here. Uh, where they talk about Activision Blizzard voice concerns about Microsoft acquisition. Many fear purchases will drown out their call for a better workplace culture. So that's that's kind of the mood right now that I'm that I'm getting from uh, from people that work at Blizzard, where it's like, well, it can't get much worse. But at the same time, we don't really know what to expect or if they're even going to have jobs after the after the entire acquisition and merger and everything is complete. Um, I don't know. Phil Spencer seems like a good guy. I mean, you know, Mike Morheim seemed like a good guy too, but then you look at all the shit that happened underneath his watch, you know, like we don't really, we think all these guys are good guys. But we don't really know. You know, we just have to like hope that these deals go the, in a way that supports consumers as best as possible. And, 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 you know, maybe doesn't fucking shoehorn in NFTs and the fucking everything, please. <laughs> <laughs> it will take years for Microsoft culture to fully take over. Well, they did. Um, don't ruin this for me. Well, listen, listen, like Phil Spencer has, it, he does have a very like, um, uh, kind of idolistic, uh, persona on, on online. Like everybody knows who he is. Uh, people, I mean, in general, Xbox has been pretty good about having their, uh, uh, front facing people representatives be very accessible right um, and so we hope that Phil Spencer is going to handle this the way that we expect him to it's the way that he's conditioned us like if it was Bobby we'd be like oh well fuck <laughs> if Bobby was in charge of Microsoft and they acquired Activision we'd be like well fuck like uh, it's going to fuck everything up but you know we but it's because we know because of what he's shown us in the past so now we gotta wait and see if this is if if he's gonna if if this is gonna clear up. But right now, I don't think anything's gonna happen for this next year. You don't reach a position like Phil's without cracking a few eggs or stepping on a toe or ten. True. Yeah, yeah, Gaben. Yeah, what what is Steam gonna buy something? Nah, they don't need to buy anything. They're sitting pretty. One thing I can feel good about with Phil, he's not even the top ten most paid gaming CEOs. Bro, that's a great that's a fucking that's a great fucking like tidbit. So true. So true. Nothing compared to Reggie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like that's a great example, right? Like we want everyone in the industry to be a Reggie. 
and Phil Spencer feels like he's almost at Reggie's status. You know, everyone loves Phil. He seems like, yeah, he really cares about the game. He's fucking hype, you know? But you never know when he might run into a Randy Pitchford issue. We're like, we discover a USB or something like that with like, uh, what, what did he have on it? Like fucking scat girl or some shit? I don't know. But <laughs> Reggie was cutthroat at Pizza Hut. What was he doing at Pizza Hut? Oh, he, oh, he was like, he was like boy directors or something. <laughs> I was like, damn, what happened to Reggie at Pizza Hut? What the fuck? <laughs> A magician, yeah. If Val buys a game company, they'll end up just not making games anymore. <laughs> see, see, we are conditioned on how these how these CEOs and representatives of companies are supposed to act. We know that Bobby is an asshole. So anytime Bobby does something, we immediately think, how does this benefit Bobby? Whenever Reggie did something, it was like, how does this benefit Nintendo, the company, the culture, right? Like, that's how we felt with Reggie. Phil is kind of in between. Kind of in between. There should be, like, a chart. Like, chaotic, neutral, like Sean Murray, right? <laughs> no, 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 chaotic, good. Sean Murray is, like, chaotic, good. <laughs> there has to be, we need, like, a force distribution for all of these different... <laughs> <laughs> All these different CEOs and representatives of companies. That would just be the fucking best. Oh, man. <sighs> Moving on. Do you guys like hentai? Yeah? You with me on this? Yeah? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I fucking love hentai. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Well, in Italy, <laughs> this past week, I can't play the clip. I cannot play the clip. I will tell you what happened. And if you feel like linking a clip or something, if you like linking something to, uh, to Twitter or something, then you can play the audio. Oh, can I play the audio? Somebody link it real quick. I'll see if I can play the audio. <laughs> because the audio is so good. But I have to read you the description of what happened first. So... So during a live cast meeting of uh, the Senate meeting uh, in um, uh, in Italy, in Rome, uh, they had they had they had they had guest speakers on. They had a, um, uh, a, a, a Nobel, a Nobel Prize winner who was like there to talk. Um, and I guess they just had like an open Zoom or something where anybody could basically say anything. Right. And. It says here, it says, a short porn video was broadcast during an online event staged at the Senate by anti-establishment five-star movement on Monday. Anti-establishment five-star movement is the name of it. Five-star movement. That's the name of the um, of the anonymous style group. Uh, Senator Maria Laura Montava, Montavani uh, on Tuesday reported the incident to postal police voicing a hope the culprits would be punished. She stopped the offending video, an anime style video showing a stylized couple having sex after about a minute and ejected the people who would had the stream, who had put it up on the streaming event in the voice or in uh, uh, in open data stylized couple oh boy just 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 listen to how long it goes on for it's a long time Significa, insieme alla loro repentina accessibilità e alla loro affidabilità this is the panic part hey, man. Non è così. Grazie a tutti, c'è una persona che si è introdotta in Goes maniera... Uh, scusate, non, se per favore l'altra regia mi dà una mano... I, uh, <laughs> You're trying to talk over it. <laughs> 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 so... I wish I could show the video because it's so good. It's so good. Like, you could just see the corner. You could just see the corner. <laughs> Mucho teams, bro, yeah. <laughs> like the, there, this guy was just like... <gasps> I don't know, ah, sex or something. I don't know what he said, but he was <laughs> legit screen shared. Yeah. Oh man, it was so good. So fucking great. It's a Final Fantasy 3D hentai animation from the Final Fantasy 7 remake with Tifa. That's right. That's right. Tifa, Tifa, Tifa Lockhart. I had seen the video. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, I'd seen the video online on, on the set in the Senate broadcast and everything. So I saw it. Elsewhere on the internet, 
Speaking of videos, oh my, sure. Man of culture, bruh. Yeah, two people drop connection. I was actually waiting for them to turn off the cameras and everything. Research was done for notes purposes only. Have you guys, um, do you guys know what YouTube originals are? I'm sure most of you probably do and could probably like name at least one show that came from YouTube originals. Toast, Cobra Kai, bam. Cobra Kai. Uh, you watched what a couple years ago? Yeah, no clue. Yeah, because the biggest thing that came out of it was pretty much Cobra Kai before it moved to Netflix. Uh, well, YouTube Originals is shutting down. Uh, this update YouTube Originals, they basically say they're going to be shutting down uh, and uh, reducing it. So they're not going to be providing video content and, and both basically video support. Uh, for productions unless they are part of the YouTube Kids Funds group or the Black Voices group. Um, they're on a continue honoring commitment to already connect contractor shows and all that, but for the most part, they're, they're going to, yeah, more dead Google features. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And like it, the, how I found out about it was literally this tweet. I was like, really? Like this, <laughs> this is the announcement. <laughs> so yeah, it's gone. But Cobra Kai is available on, on Netflix now. And it's a great show. Yeah, it was on YouTube. It was crazy. It was crazy. G plus. The fuck? <laughs> uh, and last but not least. Look at this NFT I found. It's crazy. It's got all your favorite bands on it. Who wants to buy? $455 and this can be yours. <laughs> no, I'm serious. $455 is how much it's going to cost to go see all these bands right here. General admission, $439, $440, $444, $447, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $
Just take a bunch of drugs. You won't care about the virus. Just take a ton of drugs. Specifically, take a bunch of uh, CBD pills because rumor has it that that protects you against infection from the coronavirus. I told you guys when I caught it, I was like, the reason why I didn't get any, I didn't have any lung issues when I had every other fucking, every goddamn fucking problem I had, except for lung problems when I had COVID. Um, and I was like, it's got to be because I was hitting the bong like all the time. Like prior to that, I must have had like just resin laced lungs. And so the coronavirus COVID got in there and they were just like that fucking John Travolta fucking gift. What the fuck? They can't connect anywhere. It's awesome. It's copium. <laughs> no, man. It's causality. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but you can't see Adela Vegas though. Why? Does she have residency there? I feel like everyone's a residency in Vegas. So all our artists go to die. Uh, Bonk sounds as Smoke 2 joint stars playing. Yeah. Was an Osmosis Jones <laughs> movie in you? Jesus. All right. That's it. That's it for the news today. Thank you, everyone. Did you cancel the start of a residency? Oh, I knew it was a presidency. <laughs> of course. Of course it was. Of course it was. Get your tickets for Warp Tour 2022. <laughs> Or just buy the NFT. Whatever, whatever, make it floats your boat. Whatever works for you. Go for it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, chat. Thank you guys for hanging out. Just the fuck. All right, be good. Hang out. That's it.